Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All coming to you from my brother's place in Manhattan Beach. I guess I'll give you a quick little, uh, <laughs> the camera's not exactly focusing properly, but there you go, there it is. Anyway, he is just, just, uh, I don't know, a mile from the beach or something like that. So it's very, very nice. I've been surfing a couple of times since I've been here. Um, anyway, so <laughs> regardless of that, what I want to do is talk about an article that came out on July 4th, breaking nits of petition claims Tesla sudden unintended acceleration is real but fixable. So if you, <laughs> there's going to be a, a code word, you know, SUA for sudden unintended acceleration. So the basic thing is, and I want to start off by saying that I am not an expert in this at all. So please, you know, I will pass on the information that I've got from others, but I don't really understand this stuff well enough because we're going to get into something from Jason Hughes that counter argues against this, but I just don't have enough information to be able to tell you or enough knowledge to be able to tell you whether that's accurate or not. I I have no reason to not believe that. Green, the only, is backing up that point of view and everything, too. Anyway, so sudden intended, unintended acceleration is what you're seeing down here below. Interestingly enough, I think a lot of it happens in China. But, uh, but basically, the idea is that the car, you're just driving it, and you don't have your foot on the accelerator pedal. And all of a sudden, the car just starts to accelerate out of control, and you, you know, it keeps driving until you crash into something or something terrible happens. So, if true, this is a really, really major issue and something that obviously has to be addressed. The question is if it's true or not. So, I'm going to start with this article from uh, autoevolution.com. I will put a link to all of this stuff in the description, of course, so you can check it out yourself. New information received by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, shows that sudden unintended acceleration events with Tesla EVs were real and not driver errors. The report explains in detail what caused the cars to accelerate even when the accelerator pedal was not pressed. It also offers recommendations to solve this issue once and for all. Okay, so uh, yeah, and Jackson Hughes, actually, this is really interesting. This just popped up. I had not seen this before. Jackson Hughes has offered his own side of the story, and I believe you should read it. So anyway, that is actually really cool on Auto Evolution's part that they have a counter argument to this, and I think that's really cool. So they're reporting the story. Um, like I said, that's breaking. <laughs> Yesterday, I did not see that when I looked at it previously. For quite some time, Tesla electric vehicles have been accused by drivers of accelerating out of control without anyone touching the accelerator pedal. Still, investigations have concluded that almost every single case was caused by the drivers inadvertently pressing the accelerator pedal instead of the brake. So again, it's one of those things where you're trying you're backing up or something and somebody cuts you off behind you and you're like oh gosh and you know you think you press the, the brake pedal but you accidentally slip and your foot's in the wrong position press the accelerator back up hit them you know and you're like oh that was definitely the car's fault and what they're saying is in these sorts of situations it's actually the driver's fault not the car's fault because they unintentionally press the accelerator it does happen it's happened to me a few times in my life uh, fortunately no bad incidents have happened because of that, but it's like, whoopsie, you know. So anyway, Tesla owner, Chinese Tesla owners have gone so far that they installed cameras in the foot area of their cars to prove they did not press the accelerator, <coughs> excuse me, should a sudden unintended acceleration or SUA event occurred. Safety bodies in several countries opened investigations into these crashes. Many were closed after Tesla provided evidence that the accelerator pedal was pressed all the way down in those cases. So again, Tesla has access to immense amounts of information. They, um, they, they not only have the visualization that you see on the screen, but basically every activity that's happening in the car is being recorded. So of course they can just go like, hey, look, here's the data and it shows the accelerator was physically being pressed here and that means that it's the driver's fault. And that's the, the, you know, the kernel of what is gonna happen later in this article here. Uh, they, they claim the SUA, but in January, the Office of Defects Investigation denied the petition filed a year earlier. Okay. Anyway, according to the ODI um, resume for the DP-2001 investigation, no evidence has been identified that would support opening a defect investigation into SUA in a subject vehicle. In every instance in which e event data was available for the review, the evidence showed that SUA crashes were caused by pedal misapplication. So here we get into it. However, on June 29th, 2023, ODI received a new petition requesting a reevaluation. The document explains that some intermittent high electrical current demand on the vehicle's 12 volt systems may have caused some, of all, some or all of the incidents examined. The petitioner based their information on a review of open source research analyzing the Tesla Model 3 inverter design. So something that's important for people to know, and I think a lot of people don't know, 
is that the vehicle itself, the 12 volt battery in the vehicle controls most of what happens in the vehicle. So I think everybody thinks there's this big battery pack under the car. And that's the only thing that uh, is controlling the car, like running the car. But what they have is they have a 12 volt system that's going on. That's going to be upgraded to 48 volts, potentially with the Cybertruck. We don't know for sure yet. But, uh, but the 12 volt system, you know, in your, in your regular car, your gas car or something, that's that lead acid battery that sits in the car, the really, really heavy thing that you have to replace every few years. <clears throat> and that also has to be done with the Tesla as well. So even if the main battery pack is perfectly functional, if and when you're 12 volt, and like my car, you know, our older car has a lead acid battery or Model Y, and it's going to have to be replaced sometime soon. They last somewhere around three years. But a huge amount of demand is put on that because, of course, the full self-driving computer is running on that. All of the controls, uh, apparently it takes a huge amount of amperage to turn the steering wheel and stuff when you're in full self-driving mode. I, all of that stuff is being operated through the 12-volt battery, and that means that there's a lot of power draw on it. And the claim here is basically that if you have a lot of power draw, it can, it can drop the voltage of that 12 volt battery temporarily, and then it can trigger off a sensor that makes the car believe that the accelerator is pressed, and then the thing can accelerate because it thinks that it's pressed. So, so it's just important to understand that there is a 12 volt battery in a Tesla, and that is separate from the high voltage system, which is the thing that operates your the, the motors that turn the wheels themselves. Okay, so anyway, based on this, a faulty inverter design creates conditions where negative spikes in Tesla's low voltage system can be interpreted as a full acceleration command, even though the driver did not touch the accelerator. This is possible because the inverter uses a voltage difference derived from the 12 volt system to calibrate the accelerator pedal APP sensor. It also explains why the logs show the accelerator was pressed all the way down, even though drivers claimed it didn't, drivers claimed it didn't touch the accelerator. If you were wondering what caused the negative spikes in the low voltage system, the petition attached below is very detailed in engineering data. <clears throat> Apparently, the steering assist system uses a very, a, a very high current motor powered by the 12 volt system. Because Teslas are heavy vehicles, the driver assist motor needs in excess of 100 amps, which is it's a lot of amperage to turn the wheels when the car is stationary. This causes the 12 volt system to drop voltage to near zero volts for several hundred microseconds. It's a little unclear. It seems to me that if you're going to be running something at 100 amps, it's going to almost have to be done through the high voltage system. I, I don't know that those batteries can provide that. I know that they can do it very temporarily. But I don't know if there's some sort of combination of high voltage, low voltage that's going on to turn a steering wheel. I always assumed it was the high voltage system that was doing that, but maybe it is the low voltage. Anyway, if it is, turning the wheel at 100 amps is going to seriously negatively impact the uh, the 12 volt battery. So that's the basic claim. <coughs> Excuse me. This in itself does not cause sudden unintended acceleration. However, if a recalibration is initiated during the interval, then an incorrect calibration voltage will be produced that is very close to zero volts. Based on the researchers' findings, it will last until another ADC calibration is performed, which may be minutes later. So the claim here, at least, is that there's kind of a, a line you know, calibration that's going on constantly. It's just like every couple of minutes, it's updating itself, and it's saying, what's the voltage right now? What's the voltage right now? And if there's an application of a high amperage event at the same time that it calibrates. The claim is that it would recalibrate to the incorrect voltage. That seems really, really, you know, sketchy just on its face that that would happen. It seems very unlikely that Tesla would be that negligent and just allow something to recalibrate itself to a near zero voltage situation, but you know, whatever. Anyway, this is what the claim is. Uh, once the calibration is performed with faulty data, it can cause a spike equivalent to pressing the accelerator pedal all the way down. So anyway, that, and then the idea here of course is, and I'm not going to read the rest of this. The idea is that then because the car believes the accelerator pedal is pressed because of this recalibration, then the data from the car shows that the accelerator pedal was pressed. So that's the basic argument here. So you can read the rest of the article if you're interested. <coughs> the interesting thing here <clears throat> is from uh, Jackson Hughes, who who responded to this. Uh, let me see what day was this? This would have been, I believe, July 5th. Yeah. So anyway, just a couple of days ago. And he said, and this is somebody who obviously knows a lot because I don't even understand a lot of what he's talking about here. But he says, I'm sure people have seen this paper describing how SUA happens in Tesla. 
This is basically just a hit piece made to look like something technical. People with actual technical knowledge of the working of a Tesla drive unit can debunk it instantly. First off, it's complete nonsense. The paper doesn't even properly describe the hardware layout in the Tesla inverters, showing a lack of actual information and understanding, making the entire premise flawed from the start. See tweet below. Next, even if we assume a 12-volt dip is somehow able to cause a latching failure in the inverter accelerator pedal sensing to persist beyond the dip, which even in a contrived situation wouldn't actually do this. So again, the idea that it's recalibrating and it's finding a lower voltage as the proper 12 volt calibration. Uh, the 12 volt rail is monitored by something like a dozen other modules. And that makes sense to me, right? This is the kind of thing where you don't want your 12 volt system to just suddenly be like, oh, it's just recalibrated and only one thing is paying attention to it. So it's a good thing that there's a bunch of stuff looking at this. Several several of these uh, monitoring, monitoring systems will latch and log any low voltage conditions for logging, regardless of the duration of the dip, usually happens in a bad 12 volt situa situation during sleep. Never seen this while high voltage is engaged. In all of the cases I've personally examined logs for, there's never been an associated 12 volt drop of any kind, so that's good to know. I'm sure NHTSA, <clears throat> NHTSA.gov has the same information, so would already be aware there's no associated 12 volt dropout. That would be painfully obvious to anyone doing even the most cursory analysis of the logs. Again, the inverter design cited in this paper is not how Tesla's inverter is designed. I'm unsure where they came up with that information. Even if it were, it wouldn't be able to fail in the way mentioned because a momentary 12 volt dip wouldn't latch the accelerator pedal with greetings at full throttle and the inverter gleefully proceed and completely ignore all other brownout detection circuitry present both in and off the DSP chips. So anyway, <laughs> TLDR, the paper is BS. And then I'll look at the original here. Okay. So, and then we've got uh, another, you know, nice long tweet here. And again, follow, follow Jason, uh, really, really amazing stuff that I'm learning here. I'm learning a lot myself. Anyway, all of the other problems with this bogus technical analysis aside, let's for a moment for a hypothetical, just assume everything he notes about how the system works in a Tesla is correct. It's not to be clear. So somehow the 12 volt rail drops to two volts. And remember, that's like the main bus. So it's, that's what the battery is putting out and you're, you're pulling a huge amount of amperage. <clears throat> <clears throat> out of it, which momentarily drains the power until it's recharged or until it has a chance to reset and that reduces the voltage. Anyway, that drops to two volts and does so long enough for all the capac capacitance on the 12 volt rail and inside the inverter to disappear. So again, wouldn't happen in a Tesla, at least that's what uh, Jason is talking about here. But even assuming it did, you mean to tell me <clears throat> that the high voltage contactors don't drop out at two volts? They most certainly do. You mean to tell me that the screens, brake lights, and the rest of the inverter, which runs off the 12 volt rails, would continue to function? They would not. So basically what he's saying is if you've got a situation <clears throat> where a 12 volt battery drops to two volts, your screen's going to flicker or go out. The All of the electronics in the car are going to flicker or go out. Bad things are going to happen, right? If you drain this thing that badly, the whole car is basically going to shut down at that point. So it's going to be super obvious that something happened to the vehicle at that moment. So it's, you know, you don't experience that in a Tesla. So he's just saying, even if they had designed this that badly, you would have physical evidence you would see things happening to the car if the if the 12 volt system dropped that severely down to two volts <clears throat> so in other words another you mean to tell me that despite having the 12 volt rail down at two volts that everything else in the car would still be functional enough to accelerate uncontrollably not possible you mean to tell me that a momentary dip in the 12 volt to two volt which has all of the consequences above and more would be enough to lock the inverter in a state where somehow it believes the accelerator pedal is pressed too full while not recognizing this as an issue the moment the 12 volt rail was back to normal not possible come on there's a million holes in this even if we assume this was you know even looking at tesla hardware correctly again this isn't how tesla's hardware or software is designed in the first place <clears throat> making the analysis flawed from the start and even more so when the premises themselves, premises themselves, don't hold up even when making the ridiculous assumption that everything else was correct. So no, there's not even for any reason for anyone to take any time or effort to bother physically trying anything, since this paper isn't even based on reality. It's clearly just a hit piece disguised by technical jargon that doesn't even apply. So, <laughs> the, again, I don't have enough knowledge about this space to be able to make an argument myself, but this sounds like a pretty reasonable argument from an outsider's, you know, naive point of view, at least, that we're talking about a situation where it would be, like, 
an egregious oversight on Tesla's part, first of all, to design a system that could go badly like this. And second of all, not to have a monitoring system in place that would immediately catch that and be like, oh yeah, this is, this is a complete mess, shut the whole thing down, right? So the, the last possible outcome would be for the car to accelerate unintendedly and continue to do that for a long period of time. Because some of the videos I've seen, the people are just driving, you know, it's, it's 20, 30, 40 seconds. This is not the kind of thing that would happen and continue to happen. Even if everything was designed terribly, at that point, you'd have this, this, you know, 12 volt to two volt dip, and then it would go back up again. And the whole system would go, oh, crap, this thing was all messed up. What is going on? So there would be there would be an immediate sort of like, <laughs> well, again, this is just assuming that Tesla's inverters and everything were designed terribly in the first place. But even if they were, it would catch that. And even if it didn't catch that, there would be logs of all of these voltage drops and everything. So Tesla would have evidence. They would have data that would go like, oh, look what happened. There's a huge amount of bad stuff happening right around this event going on. And they're not recording that. They're recording everything as fine, plus the person pressed the accelerator pedal. So all of this just comes back to the fact that <clears throat> People don't like to be responsible for things. Uh, I, I've seen people in auto accidents before claim that they're not responsible for it, even when they clearly are. And and that's not auto accidents. There's lots of other things. I've even seen kids, you know, like they drop something on the ground, like cereal or something, and it spills everywhere. And they're like, it's not my fault. You know, it's like people just don't like to be wrong. They don't like to be responsible for a mess. And so I think the natural reaction for people is to just go like, hey, that's not my fault. I didn't do that. It must have been somebody else's, <coughs> excuse me, um, but I, I hate to say it, but the, the, the most logical conclusion is it's your fault. <laughs> it, it, you were the one who made that happen. Sorry, it sucks. And it, it sucks to be the person who made a mess and it caused an accident. And especially in some of these instances, it's caused fatalities, which is really, really tragic. But it's it, it just sounds like there's they're grasping at straws. They're trying to come up with some way that it wasn't their fault, but it actually was. So anyway, that's the takeaway that I've got. If you have more technical understanding of these systems, these high voltage, low voltage systems, about the inverters, about the whole interface between the vehicle and the batteries and everything, definitely let me know in the comments. That would be really interesting. I could learn some more about this stuff. And in the meantime, if you have other thoughts about this, definitely let me know. And I will see you all in the next video. Thank you all so much.